But as a man of God, if you can go after Bob Risky for spraying Naira, let's pretend that that's why you actually arrested him. Haven't you seen the video of the governor of Niger State, for example, spraying money on the street? Esa, let's not use double standards. When are you arresting the governor of Niger State for abusing the Naira? I forgot he has immunity here. Yeah, we like to give immunity to people that are allegedly thieves. But even though he has immunity, would you invite him just for him to know? that what he did was wrong. And not just him, all the high profile people that are spraying the Naira, when will you arrest? I mean, listen guys, some of you might say I'm wrong. Some of you might say I do not understand what I'm talking about. Some of you might say that I'm just talking things I have no idea. But if you really look critically, right, you will understand that there is what we call selective punishment in, in, in Africa, that people who are powerful are not being punished, right? That instead of um, security officials going after people who are really destroying the nation, who are doing things that are affecting a majority of the people, they will rather target people who really have no significant impact on other people. Now, it's not just me saying it. Many other people in Africa are also saying the same thing. And if there's one thing politicians and powerful people know very well about common people like you and I, is that they can easily manipulate us. Is that we are easily manipulated. We have led ourselves to be easily manipulated. That is just it. But before you continue further, okay, I want you guys to watch this video. It was made by a Nigerian social media influencer or YouTuber and listen to what she had to say. Put aside your bias for Bob Risky and just listen to what she is saying. I feel like a lot of Nigerians have forgotten that our officials like to distract us with mundane things so that we won't focus on our focus. See, in case you don't know, this whole Bob Risky issue, which again, I can't even believe that we are focusing on Bob Risky, but this whole Bob Risky issue, to me, is nothing but a distraction from the things that are important. And I think one of their weapons is to use your own prejudice against you. They already know that a lot of people don't like Bob Risky, so they went after him, and so many people are selling Celebrating. Meanwhile, many of them are not even asking, how come they concluded Bob Risky's case within three weeks? Pa, pa, pa. They arrested him, they arraigned him, they sentenced him, he's already in prison, all within three weeks. <laughs> you know, if they can ensure justice because somebody abused Naira, Naira that cannot talk, if they can ensure justice for that, don't you think they should be quicker to arrest, arraign, and sentence those that are stealing our money? At least Bob Risky was praying his own money. That is why he was arrested. But some people have stolen the money that is meant for you to have good roads, which is causing a lot of accidents on our roads, killing a lot of people. They've stolen money meant for you to have good hospitals, stable electricity, running water, which is making life difficult for a lot of people, millions of people every day. But many Nigerians are celebrating. They are saying that Bob Risky is influencing their children. I'm sorry to say, but... If your children have access to the internet, they have access to millions of influencers, both the god fairy influencers and the ungodly influencers. You cannot get rid of all the influencers. In fact, Bob Risky's page is not public. He didn't make it public. He has always made it private. You would have to request to follow him and he would have to accept before you can see any of his activities on Instagram. If your children have access to the internet, I think there are bigger things to worry about online, like pornography. If you can train your child not to be watching porn, then you can definitely train them not to go on Bob Risky's Instagram page if you don't want them to. Because if you think that arresting Bob Risky 
is what will keep your children straight. I'm sorry to disappoint you, but you may be in for a rude awakening. But you know, I digress. My main point is that look at the present Senate president, for example, former Governor Agba Bill. The man was accused of allegedly stealing 100 billion when he was the governor of Akwa Ibom between 2007 and 2015. 100 billion naira. He's been under investigation by this same EFCC since 2015. That he means he no longer covers him. Nine years now, we are still on the matter. Meanwhile, the Network Against Corruption and Trafficking said the amount he actually allegedly stole was one trillion, not one hundred billion. People's money. Just imagine where Akwai Bomb would be today if that one hundred billion or one trillion was actually invested in Akwai Bomb between 2011 and 2015. Think of how many jobs would have been created by now. Think of how their schools would be. Think of how many families would have been lifted out of poverty. It baffles me that all the FCC did was to urge him to turn himself in. They didn't go to his house to arrest him like they arrested Bob Risky. In fact, the last time they urged him to turn himself in was May of last year. Today he's the Senate president. Number three in command. After the president, vice president, it is Akpabu, the man who allegedly stole 100 billion. He's a Senate president, he's walking freely, he has access to more money. He celebrated his birthday at a huge stadium. You guys have heard what she said, right? There are many things that are wrong with our nation. There are many things that are going wrong every single day. But people who are supposed to do something won't do anything. Won't really get those people who are destroying our nation accountable. They won't hold them accountable. That's why those people keep on doing whatever they want to do and they go scot-free. They go scot-free. Imagine the amount of money that is being stolen from the state. And that money that is being stolen affects you and I because roads are not being done. Hospitals are not being supplied with, 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 with medical appliances. Schools are not being equipped with modern days appliances or modern days learning materials. But yes, still we cannot hold them responsible, right? We, 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 we do not even see anything wrong with what they are doing. Rather, we will hold somebody who is not doing anything that affects us. That is a person who will be happy to see them being persecuted. But risky spread Naira, yes? So what? What about all the embezzlers? What about all those people who have diverted public funds into their private accounts? What have the F uh, EFCC done about them? What? What have they done about them? Can anyone tell me? Just imagine what would happen to our states if all those people who stole money were being told or were being held accountable and this money they stole brought back to the system. What would happen? Wouldn't us, wouldn't us have good roads? Wouldn't us have good drinking water, like what the lady said in the video? Africans must get their priorities straight. For far too long, we are being deflected. Our attentions are being deflected into things that really do not help us. It was the same thing in Ghana. When Ghana was facing one of the most severe economic crises, in fact, Ghana as a country was in the gutter. They, they were unable to pay their bills, if not of the IMF and the, and, the, and the World Bank that came to their aid. Ghana would have gone bankrupt. In, in fact, some analysts speculate that technically Ghana was bankrupt. What they, what they got was a bailout. Technically, they were bankrupt. And instead of Ghanaian lawmakers trying to figure out where all the money has been going or what went wrong, what really went wrong that Ghana was brought to that state, they were there fighting about anti-LGBTQ laws. And according to them, that was the most important thing that would save Ghana from itself. They had to put laws in place to, to fight against people who identifies as LGBTQ or people who think they belong to the LGBTQ community. That was priority number one for Ghanaian lawmakers. 
Is that not a missed priority? Why the country was sinking, why everyone was suffering, why, why people had nothing to eat, people were struggling to survive. Lawmakers who are being paid by taxpayer money were out there busy in debating same-sex activities. Just, 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 just process this for yourself. And now they pass the law, okay? How has that law helped the ordinary Ghanaian? How has it? And the thing that got me so angry the most was that ordinary Ghanaians were, were so happy. You know, you know, they were cheering. You know, they were so happy that the law has been put in place. According to them, this law was going to restore the value and sanctity of Ghana. According to them. And I was out here shouting that, please, these lawmakers are trying to distract you guys. These lawmakers understand that the government is failing and they are unable to hold those who have failed the country accountable. And so they are trying to, to deflect the attention. And that was why they were coming forward with the so-called anti-LGBTQ law. That was just it. That was just it. And for some reason, the masses didn't even want to hear what I was saying. According to them, they are from a Christian nation, they are from a, a religious nation, and they, they believe in family values and so on and so forth. And LGBTQ activities was destroying traditional values. Is that not a missed priority? Is that not a missed priority? It's the same thing going, up in, going on in Nigeria. But whiskey up, but whiskey down, but whiskey this, but whiskey that. Nigerians cannot drink pure water, but whiskey up. Nigerians do not have good quality roads, but whiskey down. Ministers are embezzling money, but whiskey up. Um, governors are spraying money in the street, but whiskey down. But whiskey, but whiskey, but whiskey, but whiskey. Distraction, my brothers and sisters. Distractions. So before I end this uh, video, I want us to go through this article. Uh, it's from the uh, is it prison administration. They came out to assure all of us that Bob Risky's parts were all intact. And uh, we shouldn't be worried that Bob Risky is a man. I do not understand the kind of like obsession with his body parts. But you know what? Let's go to the article first. So the headline reads, Controversial Nigerian cross-dresser Bob Riskill's male organ intact. He is treated as normal male inmate, prison official said. An official also said that Bob Risky is being held in the same prison cell with male inmates at the facility and that he is being treated as a normal inmate. An official of the Nigerian Correctional Service has told the punch that after examination, the facility confirmed that the male reproductive organ of the controversial cross-dresser Edris Okanyeye, popularly known as Bob Risky, currently being held in Okoye Correctional Center in Lagos is complete and intact. The official therefore said the cross-dresser was being treated like a normal male inmate. The official also said that Bob Risky is being held in the same prison cell with male inmates at the facility and that he is being treated as a normal inmate. Bob Risky has claimed that he had undergone a sex change and transformed into a woman. Sahara reporters had reported that Justice Abimbola Awoboro of the Federal High Court sitting in Lagos on April 12th, convicted and sentenced Bob Risky to six months in jail without the option of a fine over Naya abuse. Sahara reporters had also reported how Bob Risky was arrested by the personnel of the Economic and Financial Crime Commission in Lagos State for mutilation of Naira notes and not for his lifestyle as a cross-dresser. There had been calls 
for Bobrisky's arrest, especially after social media influencer and blogger Martin Vincent, popularly known as Very Dark Man, in recent videos condemned the award of Death Dressed Fini to the cross dresser at a Nollywood event. However, the Nigeria police force said it could not arrest Bob Risky over calls to arrest the cross dresser. The Punch on Monday reported that a top official of the Ekoyi Correctional Facility said that Bob Risky was examined at the point of admission and that the outcome of the examination revealed that the convicted cross dresser had no realignment of gender or genital organs. The official was quoted as saying, Bob Risky made a public declaration that he was a male and court proceedings are public records. Every inmate brought into a facility during admission is examined. He was equally examined and no realignment of gender or genital organ was discovered. The male biological future were the same. After that, a call was allowed to him and he had a certain number of inmates with him. A bed space was also allocated to him. It is just like a boarding house where your housemate will issue you your personal belongings. The prison official added, when it is time for class, he attends. When it is time for food, he will go and get his portion. The same goes with prep and light off. He observes all this without preference. He has been going about his business just like other inmates since he was brought in here. The official who also clarified the claims that Bob Risky was being protected against abuse said that the facility frowned against any form of abuse by a fellow inmate. The official said he is not getting any five-star treatment and is not being protected from anybody. He follows the same rules and regulations just like every other inmate. Single cells of isolation cells are to prevent outbreak of communicable disease. In a male prison, homosexuality is outlaw and it is a grievous offense. Sodomy or homosexuality is frowned upon in the custodial center. So any inmate that tries to violate him will face the law. When asked in court if he was a man or a woman, Bobrisi told the judge that he was a man. So I just have to say this right. I do not get the obsession about his um, personal body parts. And uh, I do not think that this should have been made public because this is like a, a private issue, right? You cannot just go on air saying that someone's personal parts are intact. What were you thinking? Do you think that he sold the parts or what? <laughs> you know, sometimes we humans are too obsessive about certain things that will make you wonder why. But all the same, I wish Bob Risky all the best and I hope he serves his prison sentence in peace and within a couple of months, he will be out and he can then do whatever he wants to do. But I believe he must have learned from this incident of spraying money around and he wouldn't do it anymore first of all i don't even understand why people spray money around i personally i don't do it but i think some people love doing it and if the law is against it then please stop doing it do not spray money around do not get yourself into trouble right don't spray it if you want to um encourage people if you want to bless people just give them the money in their hand don't spray the money on them there's no point doing that so i hope that um uh, this information is like that and i hope that the people in nigeria can understand that but we're still going to prison wouldn't help them, wouldn't stop the economic crisis. They should be holding their lawmakers, holding their politicians accountable for all the things that is going on in Nigeria. But you guys out there, after watching this video and hearing that Bob Risky's private parts is still intact, what is your take? What, <laughs> what do you think might be the reason why the prison officials thought it wise to make it public that Bob Risky's private part is intact? 
<laughs> like, like, how does that even concern us? <laughs> but anyway, maybe it concerns you. So let us know in the comment section below because, like, oh, if you love hearing what you have to say, so thank you. And please do us a favor, okay? Like this video, share it, and then most importantly, 